Hi, my name's Kyle Kelly. I'm a cinematographer and colorist in New York. As a cinematographer first, for years I approached the color process as something completely separate from production, a tool for post to fix errors and build a look after the fact. It wasn't until recently that I learned just how backwards that approach really was. Now, before digital capture became the norm, a DP would test various film stocks and processing methods, dialing in the look they wanted before principal production. Through testing, they'd know just how far they could push a particular stock, under what conditions it would perform best, and under which it would break. These tests were and still are crucial. In order to capture the best image in camera, a cinematographer needs to know what they will get from a specific stock and lab process. The same is true for digital, and it's perhaps even more critical. Though grading in a digital environment allows for far more flexibility than using a chemical process, that doesn't mean that we need to start from scratch. If I know the color palette of a film relies on a contrast between cool shadows and warm highlights, why wait until post-production to see what that actually looks like? It's worth noting that we're always shooting with a LUT, whether or not it's one you created. Though you may be capturing a log image in a raw format, you're still always monitoring that via some sort of LUT, whether it's one provided by the manufacturer or one created by yourself or another colorist. If you build a custom show LUT beforehand and use that to monitor on set, you'll be able to make more informed decisions in concert with your director and production designer to set yourself up for success in the final grade. I'm gonna show you how Look Designer allows you to build custom LUTs that you can then use to monitor on set. With the cinematographer, DIT, and colorist all on the same page, a simple CDL should be able to get you close to the final image before you even enter the grading suite. The footage that I'll be using for this demonstration was provided by Nicholas Santos. It's from his film, It Cuts Deep, which is uh, an independent horror comedy that I shot um, a year or two ago that was just released this year. Um, I did, was not the original colorist on the project. The original colorist was Nicholas LaRoe, and the footage you're seeing right now in the trailer was his work. Uh, so thank you both Nick Santos and Nick LaRoe for uh, allowing me to play around with this stuff. Okay, so it seems like it's obvious why it would be useful to have the LUT that you're going to be using in post available to you in camera even if you're going to make large adjustments. Um, and so why is that? Well, so what I'm playing right now is some footage from the film It Cuts Deep with the IPP2 medium roll-off LUT as provided by RED. So this is a LUT that is available in camera and that you can also apply as a sort of a base point in post. Um, you can see that it differs from the uh, raw setting, so it's not just a Rec. 709 LUT, right? So this this 709 versus this 709, there's something's different, right? This is part of the problem with Red is that there's multiple different versions of their uh, standard quote unquote 709 LUT. And you can see here that it, you know your contrast is different, highlight roll off is different, so you don't actually know what you're getting. And then, although again, this is not the look of the actual film. This is something I just created for an example say this is what we were actually going for. Obviously this is incredibly different from this, right? It's just a completely different looking image. Now, of course, this is something that can be done in post. I did this completely in post myself. But if this is the look that you're going for, it makes a lot more sense to just have this available in camera to monitor. Uh, you know, obviously you want to have a calibrated monitor so you're looking at accurate scopes and you're looking at an accurate image. But you can imagine that having this on set would, would yield a completely different result. If I'm lighting to this and I'm exposing to this, I can see that there's all this information here because I've, you know, lowered my contrast and my highlight roll off is a lot less intense than here. I mean, granted, this information is all there. So, you know, as I drop down my my ISOs here if I were to drop that way down. It's clearly there is the information there, so it's not really a concern. But it might have led me to, you know, push the exposure further. Who knows? Um, also, you know, you think about if you're working with 
uh, your production designer and your director and they're looking at the frame and they say, you know, if this is your palette you're eventually going for, this sort of contrast of, of cool and warm tones, and they see this image, they'll probably say, okay, great, that's that looks like what we're going for. Whereas if they see this image, they will probably say, huh, that's a lot warmer than I thought we were going to end up with. And you say, oh, no, 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 don't worry. We're going to cool it down in post. We're going to cool it down in post. Well, that <laughs> can only get you so far. And it's, uh, it also means you're giving up the control of the image to someone else rather than really working to develop it ahead of time. So that example out of the way, I just want to sh you know, actually walk through how a look designer can be used to, um, to build a look. So you, know, you just apply your look designer as you would any OFX plugin. And the first thing you want to do is you want to come, come up to your input profile and select the camera you're working with. There, you know, every update seems to be adding new cameras, but um, most of the major ones are here. So I'll start with my red IPP2, since that's what this was, the, what this was shot in. Um, and that's just bringing it to a Rec. 709. Um, the next thing that I generally do, we'll come back to all these op options at the top afterwards, but the next thing that I generally do is come down to my negative options. So, you know, these you don't have to use. You can build a luck LUT using other options as well, but I find that these can yield something really interesting. Um, so I'll start with a negative stock. You also have the option of these minor and major options. You can go through all of them and find there's, you know, a ton of different, ton of different choices here, but um, just for the sake of example, I'm going to use Vision 350D. It's a pretty standard stock, and you know this is a pretty brightly lit um, daylight scene, so I'll use the 50D for that. You can adjust your negative intensity. You can see as it's going up and down what it's doing to the to the image. I'll probably start somewhere around here, um, and then you can select your contrast curve. So again, there's several options here. Um, I'm going to start with something relatively low contrast. I like this this F5 look, and then again you can adjust your contrast intensity. Um, again, I'm going to stick around somewhere here for now, and then if you'd like, you can also select a print stock. And so, you know, part of the thing that gives film its distinctive look is not just the original negative stock that it's captured on, but then the stock that it's printed on, um, and that. The combination of those two factors are a big part of what gives it its look. Again, you have the opportunity here to adjust the print intensity, um, and then usually, often with these combination of factors, you're going to end up with something relatively high saturation. So I end up dropping the saturation a little bit before I do much else. Um, so there already, you're starting to get something that is just a good baseline for an image. So where the real magic of this uh, look designer comes in, I think, is really in the subtractive color science. So subtractive color is a you know concept that comes from film, and really it's just a different tool set. So you know you could really probably accomplish the same things that I'm going to be getting here through your lift gamma gain controls, but it's just a different tool set, and I find it can really yield interesting results. So um, before I even uh, deal with the individual controls just to show you what happens if I increase everything. As you can see, it's darkening the image slightly and it's also um, increasing saturation. So, so as you're doing this, if you've already dialed in your exposure, you may want to adjust your push and pull to uh, compensate. So I'll reset those. I'm just going to push in a bit more cyan here, a bit more yellow. You can see it's really starting to push into those highlights. So give a tiny bit of magenta and a little bit more cyan. Okay, and then I'm going to push this up a little bit. You also have temperature control here. You know, if you really want to go one way or the other. I find that this is generally something that I would do on a per shot basis, but you know, if you want to make a global change, you can. Um, and then you've got some lift gamma gain controls as well, and I'm just gonna dial this back a little bit. So, you know, so now we have like a decent starting point for if this is where we, if if 
this is the LUT. Say this is what we like. Who knows? It's something I did in five seconds. So <laughs> you probably want to take a little bit more time and actually be basing it off of references and in conversation with your director, etc., etc. But now you've got this look and this LUT, and you can apply this to your other shots or you can export it. So it's as simple as just clicking your export LUT 33 or 65, depending on if you're going for use in camera or on a monitor or for uh, use within DaVinci. And that's basically it. So, you know, as you can see, you can really create something entirely different that then can be applied to your various shots. So I want to show you one more example. So this was, you know, a simple back and forth scene at a diner. You can see there's a lot of red pollution here. Uh, there's sort of like a magenta haze. Um, and very quickly, uh, by applying the same LUT I created earlier, you end up with something just not only cleaner looking, but, you know, arguably more filmic. I know that's a pretty general term. Um, but I think it would be pretty easy to argue that that is a better looking image than that. Um, and even if it weren't better looking, if this is actually the colors that I'm going for, this, you know, these like darker blues, um, contrasting with the warm skin tones, as opposed to this sort of wash of warmth. So not only will you have an easier time lighting on the day, an easier time actually assessing what you're working with on the day and making sure your director, production designer, producers, etc., are happy, when you get to post, you'll be closer to the final image. If you've got the LUT that you're going to end up using as your show LUT, you can apply it in camera, and then when you're looking at your dailies, create a little CDL, and then when you get to post, maybe all you need to do is add a little vignette. This one's a little intense, so I'd probably dial that back, but let's say here if I copy that one, there you go. So maybe I just, you know, bring in this vignette, and all of a sudden you've got a pretty nice image. I'd probably actually dial that back a little bit. Uh, soften it up, maybe make it a little larger, but you get the picture this versus this. This is direct from camera. This is also direct from camera. And look how much closer to the final you get. And that's just simply adding a vignette without even a CDL. I think you'll find that if you really learn how to use this tool, it'll become an incredibly useful part of your onset workflow that carries over into your post-production workflow.